Today is the final day to get entered to win this 485 horsepower 73 Plymouth Duster. Last week, we did an awesome exterior transformation on this thing, but there's one huge project left to tackle, and that's the interior of this bad boy. I've got carpet, seats, door panels, steering wheel, miscellaneous hardware, and we got a little bit of tss, 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 Craigslist rebuilding to do as well. Let's go ahead and jump in. We've got a lot of work to do. Well, I think we'll start with the most obvious thing. It's just ripping out all the old carpet in here, see what we have underneath of it, do any wire wheeling or repair work if we need to. I know it's been patched in the past, so we're just gonna take a peek on that, scan it, see if we need to doll it up anymore or just let it be. We gotta vacuum this thing out, see if we find any other miscellaneous trim pieces or do dabs, and then just start gutting this thing so we can put it all back together again. So we'll go ahead and get started here. It's actually late in the afternoon. Add fixing the door handle to the list. <laughs> oh, I broke a piece of the thing. Darn it. Anywho's. The guys are putting a cab corner in that OBS Chevy. When that dries on that, we may just load both these up and head back home tomorrow morning, but Nonetheless, I need to get started on this. We are running out of time. Just gonna take the sill plates off here, start pulling all the junk out, get the Mouse Sucker 500 in here, see what we can find. There's the phone for the shop, looks like. That's a pretty good find already. And tear this out. Now I know we've got a patch in here. We're gonna see what that looks like. Might just close our eyes. We might have to do some seam seal or something else. I don't know right now. Okay, so we got four screws here. We'll probably have to take these lap belts out as well and then make new provisions in the new carpet. This is a two-piece unit. I'm not sure if we got a one-piece or a two-piece license plate patches. That's pretty approved. This is what's left of the build sheet, unfortunately. The Mises got to it. Chewed all that up. We're going to get rid of these rinky uh, boot mats or whatever these are. Rear belts, I believe, can stay right there. Those should be just fine, but we also want to get the door panels off, plastics, all of that. We're probably going to go ahead and paint these up as well to match the dash that's been refurbed now. This wheel is just a sore eye at this point, but we're going to get that taken care of. By the way, you might already have noticed, early yesterday, had the windshield replaced. So that's brand new, tinted, got a brand new gasket in it, and then they reused the chrome or the stainless on that. Also, it was at the alignment shop at 6 a.m. this morning. Got everything aligned, wheels in the correct orientation. It's gonna go down the road real nice. So legitimately, I think all we have left is this pig pen here. Yep, yep. <sighs> I could probably run these in a square body though. Those are good nail down pads outside. Yep. Oh, I thought I vacuumed this out once. Maybe I didn't. We might have just got it home and parked her up. And then of course, you gotta remove your glove box to put carpet in. That was easy. Snot rag, couple gloves. Hmm. Oh, of course, black eyes. And a bad wrap cap. <laughs> Sweet. Mm-hmm, here I am. Okay, got these cute little access ports. Boom. Ooh, wing nut. That's top pocket. Okay, and then, hip! Wrong way, hip! There we go. Somewhere, there it is. Okay, now, I think we can pull these bad boys out. Yep. 
These are actually in pretty good shape for being 319 years old. Could clean them up with tackle, I think. I think I could. I think I might. I think I will. Why isn't this? Oh, there's more screws back here hidden. <laughs> Does this mean you can't take it out without removing the rear seat? That doesn't seem right. Huh. There we go. And then you got a Shin Skinner 400 hanging on here. Get rid of that. Oh. Oh boy. Oh. Um, should we pretend we didn't see that, or should we actually fix it? When I say fix, I don't mean like fix. I mean like, should we leave it? Pretend we didn't see it, or fix it? I don't know. Let me do the other side and think about it. You'll never believe what a guy found over on the drinker side. I don't believe it. Wait a minute, that's a nice plate. I kind of want this. So maybe we should take these out and just see the extent of the damage. And then we can better determine, you know, what it is we're doing. That one's not even holding anything. Okay. Oh, peekaboo! Problem is, there ain't really nothing to weld to. Ah, this could get interesting. Can it? It can. Help! Ah. Now, for gentle, we can roll up all this garbage and trash. Save on the old vacuum and elbow. <laughs> Three plates. Huh. That one's got pretty decent tags on it. Might could get us home, actually. Here's a question. How did three mice that were all blind somehow find each other? <sighs> Who knows? These are really decent self-tappers until they're not. Like that one. Mm -hmm. And that one. Mm -hmm. Come on now, get on out of there. Yes. Uh, pretty good welding. Okay. Couple hidden. Sweet home Alabama. Okay. That's one way. Yeah, we definitely got some foot ventilation here. What is this? We're gonna have to be careful cutting because that's the uh, transmission cooler line right there. It's right there. Well, this is pretty advanced. This is actually the OG drain hole, but some moisture got in there and rotted it out. It's supposed to look like that one on the pile of rust dust. So, been knocking on heaven's door around here, trying not to get tetanus. I need to get up in my shots now I'm thinking about it. Anywho, if this was my vehicle and I was gonna keep it, I would put these plates right back in the same spot put some fresh screws in them and then it's fixed but i don't know where this car is going i don't know who's going to win it could be someone's grandma you know what i mean i need to do something better now i'm not going to put a whole floor in it or something like that i am out of time this is it we're there so i'm going to cut out some of this rot i'm going to clean that up and primer it Let's try to slow this down as best as possible and just do a patch job with some seam seal, try to do it halfway right-ish so we're not wasting the whole point of putting down fresh carpet and beautiful seats and all that stuff in here and someone's gonna have to tear it up in five years. 
So I'm going to clean this up with a cheek poker and try to figure out if there's enough fresh metal to actually weld or are we going to be welding with self-tappers. <laughs> That's pretty much my degree at this point. And we're going to do the same at the other side. So let me go find some equipment around here. I'm kind of just, I don't know this shop. These guys are nice enough to let me just rifle through their boxes and try to find what I need. Uh, one of the reasons I'm kind of excited to get back home in the barn is I can find stuff. You know what I mean? But anyway, let's see if we can fix this more gooder. Get out of here, smoke. Well, this is kind of the shape I'm going for. You can see it's laser straight. Nope, not even close. I'm gonna come up here, do this for some reason, make it more difficult. Do this, and then that, and then over here, and then over. I'm gonna cut this out first, and I can lay it down and try to make a template out of a new sheet, and then fold it into place. I gotta lift the car first, though, and stuff some metal underneath of this metal, if possible. So when I'm cutting, I'm not getting into these digitals. We've got um, shift machine, cooling lines and all that stuff in here that we don't want to injure while we're doing this. Here's a view from the bottom what we're looking at and now I remember this more better from this angle. So I'm going to I gotta move the wires this is for the uh, gauges so it's got a coupler thingy here that shoots it over to pulse width management, something like that. Some sort of alien technology and goes up. Got to protect them, protect this, and protect that. So I'm going to cut this zip tie, try to jam a piece of metal or maybe even just a license plate that I took off the top. So when I cut that, I'm not cutting into that stuff. Never even seen one of these things. Going to give her a try. Rip snip. Flip Fantasia! Oh, feisty. Solve the mystery. Finally figured out how you adjust a TV cable on a Mopar. <laughs> Easy. Anyway, got the spot welds cleaned up, cleaned up the edges. This is gonna be our shape. Unfortunately, the piece that I took out really had to get after her. So there is no template, so to speak. But we'll figure it out, we'll make it work. And we're gonna lay something in here. I am gonna to try to spot weld it as best I can. And then we're gonna seam seal it and then uh, we'll spritz a little paint over top of that as well. So hopefully, you know, it's a quick, re quickish repair, almost kind of more gooder-ish, but hopefully it lasts for years for whoever gets this bad boy. And if that doesn't work, there's USB chargers. So like, what do you want? You know what I mean? Found some cardboard over in the corner, a bunch of pull off old mufflers and stuff like that. Cut a top out of one of the boxes. Went ahead and used the old Leatherman and cut me out a template. Now, a little short. So I just got to remember to add there. And we should be able to beat this into submission. Something like this. And then I'll probably end up self-tapping it a couple times. So we can uh, make an outline. And then we'll come back, clean the metal up once again. Because you can see I cleaned it up here, but not here, for example. And then we'll tack this thing in and get this side patched up. A guy almost just threw this up on the old hood there and then realized for the first time in a long time, guy probably shouldn't do that. Okay. Got really crooked there, so we're gonna straighten that up by doing that. We're gonna make a couple marks here. We're gonna bring that out like that. Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. And 
something like that. Okay. Now, 37,000 years with that one and a quarter inch desk wheel, I'll have this cut out. Safety squint! Wow. A useless little devil. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. We're getting there. I might have to fire up the wood stove. I ain't kidding you. Here we go. One Southern Duster Scamp Dart floor patch panel. Someone just pulled in. We're closed! I don't know how to do exhaust! Oh boy. So step one is just spill all your self tappers Ignore that. I put a three in, kind of just hold it in position now I'm going to come back with my framing hammer, because let's be honest, these fix everything. And I'm going to start working the shape in how I need this, because we got some ripple waves, designs, curvature. We want to make sure the heel sits nice so we can floor this thing all the way. We got a lip here we got to work with. And once I get this worked in, then we'll trace it out again, like I said, clean up the metal put it back in, put the screws where they were, and then weld this thing up. Driver's side patch panel, done. That looks pretty good. I got a little hole here. I'm gonna put some seam sealer in after I clean it up, paint it. That should be fine for that tiny little pinhole. Then we gotta move over to the other side and repeat this entire process once again. Up underneath the rig, just putting everything back. And then just gonna make sure that looks good. On this side, we're not going to hit anything. It looks like we've got, this would be a EVAP for the fuel tank, that stuff. Um, I think we're fine because that actually runs through. So we'll be taking it from this side of the drain plug to get this rod out over farther this way. But the rocker panels are really solid in this thing. I mean, the rest of the floor really is super solid on both sides. Just got caught up in the front there. And doesn't look like anything's up here, so it should be just fine. So I got this side vacuumed up here. There was just a lot of particles and debris sitting here. And speaking of debris, down in here in this uh, torsion bar cross member, they left the tops open. Well, what happens is they just fill full of dirt, sand, rock, mud, all that stuff, and they're just going to rot out basically. So I went ahead and vacuumed that side out already, but when we pop this side open, I'll try to show you what kind of condition that's in. Now, I'm gonna clean it up with a cheek poker first, get as much loose stuff off as I can, and then we'll decide how much we're gonna cut, because it doesn't make sense to do a whole big panel if we don't need to. Maybe we could just put some seam sealer in that or just a little square, and uh, same here. But if the metal is really terrible, this thing might end up opening up quite a bit. So I'm gonna determine that first where I can get into some fresh metal. And then that's going to kind of get our shape based on that, essentially. Well, here's what we're going to end up with, fellers and fellettes. Something like this. I think we could just get away with that. I had to open that one up a little bit bigger than I had wanted. 
I'm gonna be honest with you, but good work. Now, let's get busy. I'm gonna have to knock these tack welds out, things like that. Did find an air chisel over there, so that should speed things up a titch. And then we'll just rinse and repeat. Well, here's this one. It actually was not as bad as the other side, the captain side, but it's still full of junk. Also, using the old jackhammer here, brip, brip, split up some metal. So we're gonna open this up wider. We're gonna go this way. Make sure we get into some good, good metal like this stuff here. Prevent it from just crawling away on us. Well, the thin 22 gauge I used on the other side is a lot more pliable and easier to work with. This is a 18 gauge, which is more like old school sheet metal. You know, can't get that no more. But it's a, it's a lot harder to work with. So I'm gonna have to get a bottle torch, heat this up, something like this here, over like that, and then this you know work it in because the screws aren't going to just bend this and then uh, we'll do the same thing trace it out weld seam seal paint sometimes i make myself laugh gaggle gaggle that was not doing the job and then i realized wait a minute these guys go through 58 tanks of gas every week <laughs> and there's this big old bad boy right here so we'll use this draw some red lines and hammer it into shape. Well, drinker side is in, seam sealed, painted, put to bed. I was kind of giving myself a hard time about how sloppy I was getting with the seam seal. Then I started looking right here. Here's mine. There's the ridge. So, as long as it's doing its job. Well, I think the guy's gonna go ahead and color for tonight. It's very, very late. Gotta let all that set up anyway before we move forward. In the morning, I think I'll get here early, pack all the stuff up, get this on the trailer and get it back to Vice Grip Garage so these guys can get back to work and I get out of their hair. Yeah, plan. Okay, see you bright and early tomorrow. I gotta figure out how to shut this place down. We have landed back at Vice Grip Garage. It rained pretty much the whole way. Cars seem to stay sealed up though, so that's pretty good. I do have one big issue I need to address. I already ordered the parts and I just, went ahead and overnighted them early a.m. I just want to get it right. I'll show you what's going on. So all that research and everything that I did and measuring on other dusters and everything said that this combination should work. On the front, the rear is fine. However, I don't like the offset. And the other big issue I had was at full turn, look what happened to the fender. I could fix the fender but we've got some rubbing issues. And for whatever reasons, Mopar sit, the tires sit farther back in the front and in the rears, they always sit kind of goofy too. See how this is farther forward? The same thing would hold true for vanish and paint. It just, it looks weird. So what I'm gonna do is I went ahead and ordered 14s. Now I didn't want to do 14s because it's not going to clear disc brakes, but I don't know. I guess the person down the line is going to have to deal with it. This is a bigger issue right now. So I got Cooper Cobras coming. I've got 14s. They're Krager SS. This is the real deal. And I guess we're going to throw these up on the wall. Hang on to them. I got a dart these would fit. So maybe that'll push me to get that dart going, but Let's go ahead and jump in on this interior. This is Caprice. She's very, very sick. And it was a wild cat we found. We're trying to 
nurse it back to health. It's got a bad sinus and face infection. But she's getting a little bit better. She's just skittish, not used to humans. Are you kidding? Okay, sorry. Little came in a little hot. <laughs> she was playing a second ago. We took her to the vet and had her get some shots for the infection and stuff. There you go, kitty. Get it. Got to teach you how to chase the mice. We got positive dome lightage. So a guy's got to snip out some fasteners up here, over there, over here, up here, over here, over there, here, here, and there. Get the A-pillar plastic off. We'll spritz some paint on that. Got to take this stuff off anyway to get this carton off. So we might as well pssst, pff, ha, pss, rebuild that as well. And maybe even this lace. See if it'll stick to that. Probably not. Perfect. So, guys just kind of throwing stuff up on these peg boards that I've been meaning to put up on the wall for a couple of years now, but never have time to do it. So I just keep putting parts and boxes on the floor and losing stuff and breaking boxes open on an accident that I can't return. So I've got it split to the left side, and then of course the drinker side. And then I'll come back and clean this up a little bit. we got some moldage and things like that. Some grime. Spritz all, this has been painted. It's like they started changing it to black, but never quite finished it. Boy, this piece, it's too bad. Really brittle. This thing must sat outside its whole life. Oh, I went to D4 for some reason. Go ahead and call me Derek Lankin. That's how honest I'm being right now. I don't know what's happening with this. All I know is we got a snag lays off of here because I can't find this one's cracked and this is cracked. I can't find these pieces. Well, I can find them, but they're just other old used ones. Is that an Allen key? Why would they do this Phillips and then the move that way? So we're just going to get this stuff off, clean it up, get these painted. <sighs> and then that'll start drying whilst we're doing other stuff. Caprice is just getting back there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That seems pretty straightforward. And I think these are just clips all the way around, but Got to work some Allen keys to get the roller up or down or crack it. You just want a little breeze, not a lot, or maybe you want to hang an arm out lever. Hopefully this universal jobber works. There we go. I even got new handles. Wait until you see these door panels. I searched high and low and found the exact ones that I wanted. I think these are just on the clips. That's, that, whoa. Is that right? Am I doing, am I doing this right? I have to do the same over here. Hits, yep. Oh, I probably could have recovered these actually. Too late now. <laughs> I think I need these clips though. Save on these. Actually, I'm pretty positive I need these clips because they didn't come with these panel. I'm going to apply here and get these out. There's the ridge color. Ah, I see. Missing screw, snapped off, broken here, broken, snap, missing, broken. I wonder if this door panel's been off a couple hundred times. Broken, snap, crunched, okay, that seems fine. Kind of status quo, so one screw was holding that. 
Okay, so this brittle snapping crunch thing, what's left of it, I need to paint. Check. Got it. So basically it says rinse and repeat on this side here. Same exact thing. This door panel is a little bit better shape. Well, I take that back. It's the same shapes. The breakage though is in a better spot. Instead of being down here where your eyes really want to hook in, it's more so down here. And then this piece over here is in much better shape. I don't think it had a lot of passenger traffic. It's probably grandma's car at one point or something like that, I'm thinking. Yeah, this side's in much better shape. None of the screw, well, I take it back. Okay, we got one broken. But this one has three screws holding it in, so that's much more gooder, it seems like. This side also had the plastic on it. So I think for whatever reason, someone was in that other door. I don't know if it was for the uh, window roller or lock mechanism. I'm not really sure. Oh, remind me to lubricate the handle on that. It gets sticky. Okay, great. We can forget together. This guy's just gonna run some hot soap in here. Do a couple pieces at a time. And I think I'm gonna use this uh, gray scotch bright at first. See what that does. I think this is gonna work just fine. Ow! Boy, I gotta turn that down. Woo! Guy's using this uh, trim black stuff. I got one light coat on most of the stuff here and two coats on some of it. I'm just kind of working my way through it, but I don't want this to run or anything like that. So just kind of taking my time. These nozzles are terrible. Spritzing. Just kind of working around spritzing. Sure. I think the A pillars are probably the most important because you got your teeth in them the whole time. So I got this standing up here, and if you're wondering how I did that, this is just so I can get both sides and uh, not have to wait for one side to dry, then, you know, flip it like a hog in the ground, is I just jammed a screwdriver through the pegboard here, and then just did that. And now I can get in here and brand new NOS piece found in a warehouse somewhere. Lots of receipts, so probably at my mom's house, but they're new. They came black originally. Well, the guy's got two coats on everything. Well, three on the armrests, if I'm being honest. This stuff's working pretty good. I uh, got one whole can in. I bought three just in case, because I didn't quite know what I needed. This got hot. I think that's when I was replacing the... Uh, floor pans if I'm being honest. Whoops. So I'm going to go high on the carpet here. You won't even know what happened. This should dry here in a minute and then we're going to roll it up. Yep, see I got tan. So we're going to have to kind of prop this up and make sure we get it painted next to the felt, which is also black, so we're not even taping it off. We're just <laughs> new felt. Got a little bit there I can hit. But it's getting there. Well, there goes 13 bucks. Michael Jordan! <laughs> Never fails. Guess we're down to one can. There we go. Final coat. Now I'm going to do my best to work all the edges. Do my best to make sure that when we put this in, we're not going to see any more of this hay bale color, whatever it is. Full elimination. I see some there. There we go. 
I'm excited to see this car with all black interior. I think it's going to be a huge transformation. And I can't wait to show you guys the seats. They were done right. They look really, really good. This one's really powdery. Okay, I think this piece is good. I think that's pretty good. This is good. A little bit on this armrest. This is going to need it down the felt. Go ahead and get her coat 47. I guarantee you, whoever gets this is going to have arms hanging out the window. So let's make sure we're sweat proofing this thing. Okay. I think that's going to do it. Put this on the shelf. Save that. So I'm going to let this sit in here tonight and dry. And early in the morning, we've got to tackle carpet. And then we can start putting in door panels, plastics, and then seats. And then what I've been looking forward to the most, drive this thing. I'm really excited about that. We'll go ahead and go fly around the back hills of Tennessee and just have some fun. Maybe throw some rubber around. I don't want to get too wild with it. It's basically someone else's car. Go see what we could find. See how this thing drives. Make sure everything is working great. Run it down the highway. I'm just, I'm so fired up for this. We've put so much work into this car, but the payoff always, whether it's a cheap car, a kind of a thrown together build like this or a full on build, the reward is just cruising the thing. And I'm so fired up for that. See you guys in the morning. I'm gonna clean up. Well, hey there, good morning. A lot warmer today. Heat wave. No, it's not, not really at all. It's all turned out pretty good. I'm just gonna jump in, throw all this stuff back in really quick, and we're basically back where we started, and then we can tear the carpet out and get that in, so we can rush, 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 get the seats in, so we can go drive this thing. Well, all the plastic trim is in, and that's looking great, you know, besides the broken stuff. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Okay, time for door panels. I'm pretty fired up about this. I think this is really going to change the look of the interior. So this is an old unit here. You guys have seen these a few times. And there's a very specific door card that I was looking for. And I searched high and low and actually found them once again at Classic Industries. And that's these, the Deluxe. It's got this uh, wood grain texture on the top, nice chrome strip separating the two. And these are a good quality card. It's not normally they print on them who they're actually made by, but I'm not seeing that. But we're gonna put this in, the back one will have wood as well, so this will go all the way across. And uh, we'll pick up a steering wheel that also has wood. And it's probably not gonna be a perfect match, but this is really gonna give the inside some character instead of just being all black. So one of the little challenges here with this is uh, getting these uh, fasteners installed in the right places here. This one is stamped. Made in the US, legend, legacy, looks like. But you can see here, that faster is gonna work, that one's gonna work. This one lines up, this one does not. And then we're gonna have nothing on the corner. So I'll probably end up running a screw through here and uh, see if we can get this one to fit and these two over here. So basically just pop these out we're going to reuse the old fasteners here. They're fine. Nothing wrong with those. And get this plopped up quick. Got all these popped out now. Now I just got to determine whether they slide in this way or this way because it's going to change, you know, the position or the gap on there. And normally how I do that is just start on the bottom, get these lined up, and then once the panel is on, I could just pull it out and use my eyeballs 
and figure this out over here. Well, let's see how close the guy's got this now. Starters, this goes under the lip, like that. Oh, that ain't good. Oh, this one doesn't have the screws. That's gonna be the challenge. And then I dropped a clip. Hmm. They make newer style clips for this situation. I just ain't got any. Okay, this one's wrong. Fixing it. Okay. So those are right. Now, can a guy get these in? Not damage this door card. Okay. This old school fasteners really get down. Come on now. There we go. And then I'm going to put a black trim screw in the bottom here, and that should hold this in place, and then the armrest also squeezes it in place there. Make sure this is all lined up right. It's gonna look good. Got some black door cranks here, our window cranks. New hardware and uh, biscuit, gasket, do divers. There we go. Putting the passenger armrest on the driver's side because this one doesn't all wore out. Wow. For Pete sakes. There it is. Nope. Come on now. There it goes. Okay, and then we just need the plastic trim for the handle puller. Well, the door panels are in as well as the door hardware and I have absolutely fallen in love with them. The vision I had for the black interior is really starting to come together. Now I'm really anxious to get the carpet done. That's where we're headed next. So we can finally bolt these seats in. Just gonna yank this old junk out, run a vacuum through there really quick. I got the carpet laying out in the sun right now. Of course it's black. It's probably not hot enough to really be pliable yet, but we're gonna do our best. Work this in, cut it into shape, get those door sills back on. Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, yep. Oof. It smells like a flooded basement. It's not good. Rear floors are fantastic shape. This was great news. Of course, I checked it when we patched the front, but the rest of the car is solid. Just gonna clean it out quick. Halfway decent molded carpet. Could have been a little bit better here, but it's gonna work. It does have a nice backing or insulation on it. Really, the only thing we have to do is make holes for the belts. Got one here. Should be one somewhere around here on both sides. You guys have seen my trick. Heat up a punch 
or a big screwdriver and uh, just make a little tiny hole with like a pick and then just push it through, burn the hole, and then we can mount all that in really quick. So I've got this little screwdriver punched through my hole here where my belt bolt's gonna go. And then I just make sure this is all squared up and where I want it before I make this hole. I got a punch, snapped in a vice grip, of course, best tool ever made. And I'm just gonna heat this up, get it nice and hot. And this will make that hole bigger and then it's gonna sear everything so it won't fray or tear or anything like that. And that bolt's gonna fit perfectly through this hole. Saves a bunch of time, easier, neater. First time I've heat, heated this up. You can tell I use this one a lot for carpet because it's got a bunch of glue and gunk on it. But. Let's try this. Pull that screwdriver out. Just like that. Perfect hole every time. See, it just makes such a nice hole and it won't fray. It's, it's all melted in there. And we're gonna be doing the same thing for the seat mount bolts, all that stuff as well. Sides are all trimmed up, just using a razor knife, putting a little bit of glue down here, and uh, we'll make sure this just stays put before we stick down the back seat. And I'm actually gonna slide the back set in first while I have all the room for activities, then I'll finish up the front over here. Might have seen these hanging out in the back, but go ahead and show you these seats. These are all fresh, recovered, refoamed, completely rebuilt. And I went ahead and had them use this nice caramel colored stitching. It's subtle, but if you look for it, it really pops. And of course we did the front and rear seat in this. Guy did a beautiful job. Little shop called Upholstery Plus. And I fit us in last minute, obviously. I was just thinking about putting saddle blanket seat covers on, but you know, let's just go ahead and do this right. I also might send this guy some more stuff. Like I keep thinking about like Betty White. Is it time to bring Betty White back? Get the interior fixed, the rotten smell in there. Maybe do some body work. I don't know. You guys can bleep bloop it. Just throwing out some ideas. Let's get these seats in. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep, uh, got to do the belt dance here. Usually put in my belt holder 6,000, like an A-bodies up on the armrest there, but this ain't got them. So we'll see what we can do here. Got the side ones pinned up. Wow, that easy. Clipped into place. Wow, this looks really good. All the seams match up. You see that? one of those Paul Simon's class or whatever it is. Jazzercise. In the bathroom again, scrubbing up the sill plates. Just gonna use some quad zero steel wool. It's already got the soap built in. You can already see what it was at just a couple runs. I'm gonna clean these up, rinse them off, 
and then we'll pop on the drinker side here show you what they look like cleaned up sill plate in this piece slides under the back and then screws in here cleaned up pretty good everything's tucked away nice and neat back there got my hole in for the seat so now we just got to go over and do the other side looking good nice and tidy got her tucked away nice in here got the uh, dim high beam switch and around the vacuum washer pump pedal got one more hole to make and then we can start I think I'll put the buckle in first and the belts and then we'll drop the seat in interior is looking really really nice Grab Jessica, she's gonna help me slide the base of the seat in here, and then uh, I'll work the belts through, get those bolted in, then put the actual bottom in place, bolt that in, and then I'll slide the tops in and pin those in. So I'm kind of doing it in progression instead of wrestling that whole big bulky seat in. This will make it a lot easier to get the belts through and everything like that. You ready? Let's do it. Uh, like yeah, that's fine. Okay. Just like that. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. So with it set up like this, now a guy can feed the belts through. I think I'm going to have to make a little cut in this new fabric. Yeah. And then I can get that bolted up, put the boot on it, get them angleized right, and then boom, we've got belts front and rear, which is rare for Vice Grip Garage, if I'm being honest. Okay, let's see. About here. All right. Got the drinker side in already. Just working on the captain's side. The boot on. This little devil doesn't want to start. Well, help me understand this. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Let's see if I can fight the seat in. Okay. Then seem to be sliding over. There we go. Boom. Okay, just got to do the other side. Interior's done. Oh, we got a steering wheel to try. So this wheel clearly needs to go, and I went through a bunch of different options in my head. Again, we're going for the 70s look. So three spoke, it's gotta be. Now the old school with the holes, yeah, probably period correct. I just don't like those too much. And I settled on this really nice Grant. The wood color is not precise, but I think it's really going to spruce up this interior. Give it a little bit of color, a little bit of chrome. Probably look great against those gauges. So I got an install kit for this. And uh, we'll get this popped on. See what that looks like. Yeah, that really did a number. And even got a horn on her. These old lenses were just driving me nuts. Uh, so I went ahead and grabbed some new ones. And I also got some gaskets here, so I'm gonna pop these in real quick. Yeah, that's much better. Well, after weeks and weeks and weeks, weeks of hard work it's finally time to jump in the duster 
and go for a cruise. Let's head down to the gas station, get some fresh 93 in this thing, and go hit the back roads, have some fun. Throwing in some fresh 93, we'll put in a full tank. Man, this thing sounds so good. You know, something I think I forgot to mention was when we put this new third member in this uh, eight and three quarter rear, it changed the drive shaft length and U joint. So our drive shaft ended up being a little bit too short. We shortened it just so we could move it around. And the U joint isn't quite right. Obviously we're driving it, but the reason I'm telling you this is we're not gonna be doing big smoky burnouts. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay. Maybe we will here in the future, but right now I just want to shake this thing down, drive it around and enjoy it, and we'll do some quarter throttle pulls with it. So far it's been absolutely perfect. Staying cool, about 170 degrees, it's got 60 pounds of oil pressure, 14.7 volts charging, handles great, probably could use a set of front shocks, maybe we'll get to that, probably not. But I mean, otherwise, even without, it handles surprisingly well. Well, we had a very successful shakedown in the duster. Everything is working as expected. Now I've just got to go through. I got a short punch list of small things I got to button up. Still got to get the smaller tires and wheels on, wiper blades and arms. Got to get a signal to the speedometer. Got to get a new drive shaft built for it. Just a bunch of little stuff like that, but rest assured, I'm going to have this thing ready for one of you to own it. And it's not perfect, and that's great. That's the whole point. Pulled another one out of the tree row, got it back on the road, just threw some lipstick on it. It ain't perfect, but you could slide this around on gravel. You could park it at Walmart and get dings. You can go enjoy some back roads and not worry about paint and this and that, and the kids can eat ice cream in it and whatever. I'm just so glad that one of you is gonna to get to enjoy this thing and recycle some rubber, respectfully. Now, let's take another closer look at the duster and we'll see you guys very soon.